<laughs> Shaking. Um, all right, so we we are at two thirty. We'll give another minute or so for um, for folks to come in. But yeah, welcome to everybody who is here. Um, thanks for joining us for this session. Um, let's see. I want to give uh, give our give our presenters all the time that they need. So I'll go ahead and read through um, our moderator statement and our code of conduct. Uh, the live transcription has been enabled, so you all can access that at the bottom um, of your screen. You can view the live transcript, and this will be recorded and, and added to our um, to our website after this. So, uh, welcome everyone. Before the session starts, I have a statement to read on behalf of the conference. The Open Education Southern Symposium strives to offer an open, inclusive, and friendly environment for all participants. All attendees are expected to help maintain a professional and welcoming environment, free of any type of harassment, by being mindful of the space and time you're taking up, being aware of the dynamics of power and privilege, being considerate of others' desire for privacy, being respectful of others and accepting that differences in opinions and circumstances create a stronger collaborative environment and actively engaging, actively challenging individual biases and uh, assumptions. Um, I'll post the full statement in the chat um, for anyone who wants to visit that. And um, our, we will uh, stop this at um, whatever hour uh, 50, um, sort of where, are you, where you are, and then we'll, we'll have five minutes for question and answer. So you can put those in as you um, as you as the questions arise, but that they'll be sort of addressed at the end. So um, with that, I will turn it over to our presenters. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can everybody hear us okay? <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing screen right now. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see our screen here. Um, hi and welcome. I'm Julie Reed. I'm at Central Piedmont Community College, which is in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm the e-learning librarian here. And I am Garrison Libby, and I'm also a librarian. I'm the assistant director for instructional and research services. Yeah. So we are different than Central Carolina Community College, who was just here. <laughs> um, sorry about that. <laughs> So just a little bit about our, our college. Um, we have about 43,000 students um, at, at last check um, enrolled in college credit courses. Um, there's about 12,500 that are in continuing ed programs. Um, we have about 3,000 international students representing 152 different countries. And we, have, we offer about 300 for credit programs of study. Uh, we have eight locations in Mecklenburg County which is the, our, the county of Charlotte. Charlotte has about roughly 860,000 people. So that's our, <laughs> a little bit of a setting. Um, we are different than Central Carolina Community College, which just presented there in Sanford, North Carolina. And so what we want to talk about today is um, some of the efforts we've taken with OER. Um, much of this has been driven by the library um, but, you know, so much of what we've done has been through collaboration. That's really been the theme of our OER efforts, and we wanted to highlight the ways that we've collaborated in order to create success with OER efforts, mm -hmm. and also some of the challenges that we've encountered along the way, and the ways that we're collaborating with other partners to try to overcome some of those challenges. Um, so really, collaboration has been at the heart of what we do with OER here at Central Piedmont. Um, it started with the library um, a few years ago, and we have really tried to foster relationships with faculty and staff in order to really bring OER to our college. Um, and we've done that in a few different ways. Um, so we are really trying to provide training and awareness to our faculty. Um, so we're trying to help them understand what is OER? Um, why is it important? Why does it matter? Um, why should they do it? And how do they do it? So we've been trying to do that through one-on-one um, -on -one assistance, 
but also providing um, some more self-paced online um, courses to help our faculty and staff understand um, OER. And we're also trying to work closely with our faculty to um, find OER material that really aligns with the learning outcomes, the learning objectives that they have for their courses. So on our end, we bring a lot of expertise in terms of what is OER, but we also, if you know, the faculty are the content experts, the faculty are the ones teaching those classes. And so we are really trying to help them um, build that expertise themselves to really take it to the next level. Um, and so just to provide a little bit of a timeline for um, what, what's been going on at Central Piedmont, um, our OER efforts started in about 2018, so about three years ago. Um, again, conversation started in the library um, with Julie and um, Mark Coltrane, who was my predecessor on this job. Um, they really got the ball rolling and started connecting with um, some key faculty um, from the English department, from the biology department, um, to really start conversations about OER and how they can start incorporating that at the college. Um, from that working group that was formed, they then began um, giving presentations to key stakeholders throughout the college. So the working group was this core group of interested um, librarians, faculty, staff at the college. And then from that, they began reaching out to other stakeholders, um, you know, such as um, administrative units, academic affairs, the college cabinet to make the case for incorporating implementing OER kind of systemically, systematically um, mm -hmm. into kind of the operations of the college. And then a pandemic hit. <laughs> um, so that kind of derailed some of these efforts. And just as we were kind of recovering from, um, from the pandemic, we were also hit by a ransomware attack which then also kind of knocked us off course for a bit. So we're still kind of trying to rebuild. Um, but in recent months, we've been connecting with, um, we have a center for teaching and learning excellence at the college, um, which is focused on faculty training, um, helping mm -hmm. faculty implement new pedagogy, better pedagogy. And so we're working with them to build a more scaffolded approach to training faculty on OER stuff. And so this summer we're developing a, that self-paced OER training and hoping to bring together a kind of a, a new iteration of the working group as a learning commons in the fall. And so we had, um, we've had a few successes um, in different departments. Um, we've had uh, our Bio 110 and 111 classes all are using uh, Lumen's Waymaker product, which is not a free OER, but it is lower cost, uh, so $25 approximately per student. Uh, so it brought their cost down from $135 per student to $25. Uh, so we have our English 112 students are using a free um, text from uh, also from Lumen using their Candela product, which is just right now just the PDF um, of that, that textbook, uh, but that is available in all of our different sections of, of English 112. So in one semester, we saved students about uh, $150,000 um, for that, for English 112. So their, uh, their former textbook was $80. And then we have um, a Business 115 class, which is um, the Business Ethics class and the uh, the instructor there actually cobbled together, she remixed her own OER. She had some faculty release time to do that. And so she's, they've had great success with that class as well. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about, um, the, <laughs> pardon me, uh, the English 112 class and how we worked with those students, um, or worked with those instructors, pardon me. Uh, so those instructors put together basically uh, their top 10 lists of what they wanted their any kind of OER materials to cover. So uh, things like 
you know, um, essay, different kinds of essay writing, MLA and APA citations, different um, top 10 lists like that. So they put, to, put together that list um, using just Google Sheets and um, shared that with us. And so Garrison and I were able to uh, send back an annotated list of possibilities for those addressing all of those different wishes that the, the faculty had. Um, because they're right now they're in the process of choosing uh, a new textbook. So they've had success with the with with OER. The faculty are on board for English 112. They just want to uh, to improve what they've got in the classes so far. So that's how we're working with them. We're trying to align everything, all of the resources that we find, of course, to any kind of um, student learning objective and um, getting them the best possible quality resource that we can. So we've had really good success with a few of these key partners we worked with to develop kind of these quote unquote pilot courses. Yeah. And so now we're really trying to spread that out um, at a wider level across the college. And so again, that collaborative piece is still very important. Mm -hmm. um, I talked a few minutes ago about the work with the CTLE, our Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence. And so what we're doing is trying to create what's called, um, they host learning commons, which are basically just groups of faculty who are interested in topics like there's one for global learning, there's mm -hmm. one for technology and teaching. And so we're working with them to get one kickstarted on OER specifically to bring together um, faculty who are interested, um, who want to explore OER more and provide a shared space where we can talk about what we're doing, um, share tips, share ideas, and really work together to push this forward at the college. Um, so we'll also be hosting informational sessions. Mm -hmm. um, again, our CTLE hosts just a lot of trainings for faculty, um, sessions, um, you know, all sorts of things. And so we are trying to get sessions that are like intro to OER on that calendar so that, you know, once a semester, a couple of times a semester, faculty have a chance to learn more about um, OER. This is kind of the evolution of the working group that we had, you know, back mm -hmm. in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, but there are still challenges getting attendance. Um, one of the things, you know, that we see is that we see the same names over and over, which is awesome. We have some really great partners, but then getting people beyond those few is, um, is a bit of a challenge. The other partnership we're really excited about within the college is working with the grants office. And so we're really hoping that to maybe spur some additional um, interest in OER to provide grants for adoption of OER for some courses. Um, so we're working with the grants office to explore opportunities for that as well. And then we are trying to provide more in-depth training. Um, so prior to coming to um, Central Piedmont, uh, I worked at Tidewater Community College, um, which was a big pioneer in OER. And one of the things the library staff did there was provide in-depth training to faculty on OER. So at the library, Julie and I are putting together a very similar training on OER to provide to faculty um, to help take them from the very introduction of what OER is all the way toward mastery, understanding different Creative Commons licenses, understanding how to find and remix open sources so that faculty um, you know, feel confident to go out and incorporate OER into their courses. And so we had some challenges along the way um, and that we are still dealing with. Um, so some of those are from faculty, some are from our administration. Uh, from faculty, some quality concerns remain that we're trying to address um, with those informational workshops and also one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the reliance on ancillaries, uh, so it um, was mentioned in some other, several other presentations, uh, all of those test banks and um, PowerPoints and a lot of the, the different things that the publishers provide are not provided with certain OER um, choices. So trying to, to work around that and uh, find some other alternatives for those. 
um, textbook approval cycles are something that we're trying to deal with, with that are different from not only within uh, different units, but within different um, departments within units. So that can be challenging as well. Um, faculty turnover, we have about three quarters of our faculty are adjuncts. So um, there is a fair amount of turnover in the, in the teaching and also on the, and to some degree on the staff side as well. Um, and then time. So the, um, the ability to, to really convert your course to OER takes a lot of time and effort. And while we're trying to stress how we can help faculty and the CTLE, our Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence can help faculty, it is a time commitment that um, we do have to, to deal with, with that constraint. On the administration side, they did have some concerns about course consistency. So they wanted you know, every course to have the same, to use the same material within a certain, every section to use the same course within a certain, uh, to use the same material within a certain course, pardon me. Um, there were some concerns about the impact on the bookstore. Um, that we are trying to address currently. And then also just the general lack of awareness that we are trying to combat basically. <laughs> um, but we do have some wider partnerships uh, outside of the college uh, in the state of North Carolina um, for community colleges in particular. Um, there is a, it's basically a, based on the OER Commons um, site, but it's a repository now called uh, Open NCCC, it's a lot of Cs, but um, <laughs> it's a collaboration platform where uh, faculty can look for OER materials and also upload materials that they have created. So um, we have a, a group within that platform for just for librarians. Um, so we're trying that librarians that work with teaching faculty, so we can have a place to, um, to, to talk about what we're, what, what resources we're using at our respective institutions and then also you know, hopefully down the line, upload what we're what we're working on uh, as a, as far as original OER goes. And then <laughs> across the state, we are also building another network of librarians through our professional organization. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the North Carolina Community College Library Association, and um, there were a lot of folks in across the organization who are working in OER who wanted a space where we could work together and maybe bring some, bring greater awareness across the system level, um, both within the libraries and within the community colleges themselves. Um, so we're working um, through that little task force um, to create an OER toolkit and investigate additional possibilities for um, things like grants, um, OER assessment and other ways to incorporate OER. Um, again, kind of across the state and across the community college system level and mm -hmm. leverage those efforts. So we're all working together toward the same, same goals. So in the future, uh, we're just hoping to, that all of these efforts can combine and just ensure that OER and open pedagogy is a sustainable, is our sustainable efforts in general, because it's not, it's um, the need for these materials is not, uh, is not going away. It was definitely exacerbated by the pandemic, but it's something that we, we really believe is, is uh, a cornerstone of equity. And uh, I think we're just trying to ensure that that process has some kind of, is, is streamlined basically for, for all of our institutions going forward. Uh, we'd like to involve students at more of our meetings, more of our committee um, involvement with students for sure. And then also we'd like to get some kind of system-wide um, approval and focus on OER from, uh, from the top down in our community college systems. So um, thank you very much for, for coming to our presentation. I see that there are some questions in the chat, so maybe we have time now to address some questions. Let's see. Um, <laughs> let's see. Yes, the, our, our working group involves staff as well. Yes, definitely. Um, as kind of was mentioned in the, the previous panel, um, just involve as many people as you can in OER efforts for collaboration, like get out of your silos. That was their main uh, piece of advice. That's definitely our advice as well. Um, oh, the same faculty over and over. <laughs> yeah, of course, please, please feel free to mention. <laughs> um, oh, there's a Q&A. 
Oh, and then the bookstore. Yeah. Um, a badge or certificate that we are working on that. Yes, that's a great question. Um, right now, our CTLA is working with I think it's Badger um, for for diff, for completion of different certificates. So yeah, we are we are working def, towards that for sure. Um, and the concerns about the bookstore, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we involved the bookstore at the beginning. Um, oh, cool. Um, <laughs> uh, so they are, you know, they are aware of our efforts for sure. I think um, involving them with things like print on demand um, is something that they can they can get behind. Um, also. The just the 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 profits from for our bookstore really don't come from the textbooks they sell, which I believe is the case in a lot of places across the country. They come from the snacks and the gear and all the stuff that they sell. The textbooks students are already going outside of the bookstore, or if they buy their textbook at all, they're going to Chegg or Amazon, or they're sharing it between themselves, or they're making illegal copies, or you know, there's a lot of different things they're doing that do not involve the bookstore when they're when it comes to to course materials. And we're also, our bookstore is, their contract with the college um, is coming up, coming, yeah. Ex, I don't know what the term is. It's, their we're we're expiring, renewing, yeah, yeah that contract yeah. is expiring. And so the college is investigating like additional bookstore options. So we're hoping that as part of that like yeah. renegotiation um, or looking for a new vendor that perhaps, OER can be inserted into that conversation more as an expectation mm -hmm. that like mm -hmm. this is a thing that the college is exploring like right and if you have a problem with that maybe you are not the vendor for us <laughs> um but whether or not those conversations will happen um you know so much of that is at a level much higher than Julia or myself so mm -hmm. we are advocating as best we can but ultimately mm -hmm college administration is kind of steering that ship. So mm -hmm. we're advocating and hoping for the best. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I would love to talk about badging. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> um, yeah, I think also with the bookstore, there's been some work um, with community colleges in Oregon, Open Oregon's initiatives. They definitely have some, some tips that we we're trying to follow for, for dealing with any kind of bookstore questions. So I'd recommend checking them out. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> so again, I think the number one piece is that, you know, I think the key to OER success really is in collaboration. Because yeah. no, no one part of a college can do everything on their own. Right. So developing those um, partnerships, developing those areas of expertise, so like mm. you know, the library can handle the training aspect of it. Mm. Our Center for Teaching and Learning has the structure to facilitate that training. Right. The faculty have the content expertise to really hone in on what will be best for their classes. So like finding those areas of expertise and working together um, so that A, there's not a duplication of efforts, right. but B, there's also, um, you know, no one's exhausting themselves trying to, trying to do everything on their own, um, really is a great pathway for success. Or chat ping, I think. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. We'll we will sharing slides, yes. Happy to share slides. Of course. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks and to I you think, both. And, and your statement there at the end just really beautifully encapsulates sort of the uh, the theme for this, you know, creating community and making it sustainable so that we can all <laughs> continue to do this good work without wearing ourselves out. Right. Um, so I appreciate you all. And thanks to everyone who came. Um, we will go ahead and end this session so that you all can head to the next one. Great. Thank right. you so much to everybody. Thank you all so much.